Hello, Tom Cosm here. Uh, this tutorial video today, it's a, a quick video uh, about some techniques which are being discussed in the forums um, at cosm.co.nz. Uh, we're going to show you a technique to use when you're side chaining something, specifically a, a bass line and a kick drum, uh, but we're going to talk about sending that compressor on the bass channel a separate little entity rather than the actual kick drum, because sometimes your kick drum can be quite uh, big and boomy and have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, length to it and that of course triggers off the uh, compressor and the sidechain and it actually sidechains for longer than you want or less than you want. Basically this technique will let you uh, determine how quickly the sidechain um, comes back. So I'm going to start this by creating a new MIDI track. We don't want an audio track. I'm just going to call this kick really quickly. Let's insert an instrument rack. I'm going to use an operator like so. I'm going to insert a blank MIDI clip. Let's just put it on pencil mode. And I'm just going to put in four notes like this. So this is going to be my kick drum. So if I play this now, it's quite boring. Very good. So if we go into this uh, chain, I'm going to call this first chain with this operator. We'll call this the actual kick. I'm going to make th make this a fixed one oscillator, a fixed uh, just a, a fixed pitch. We're going to turn the other three oscillators off. So so I can move this pitch around. Now I'm going to turn on the pitch envelope over here. I'm going to bring it up to 100%. Remember, the pitch envelope lets us make each one of those notes. Uh, have a, a, a bit of a variation on the pitch depending on this line here. So I could bring this up quite high, like so. I could bring this down quite low. And we can move these around until we get a basic kind of kick sound. And bring the uh, frequency down a bit more. Like so, and let's bring this up a bit. And we can give this the envelope of the amplitude of the oscillator, give it a bit of bit more release time. And bring this down again. That'll do. And I might just turn on the second oscillator and bring this up a bit. And give the, uh, just a frequency modulator and give that a bit of an envelope. So it's just, just playing at the very start to give it a click. That'll do. Not the best kick drum, but that'll, that, that will do. Now we're going to insert another MIDI channel. We'll call this bass. And we'll just use another operator. Very simple. We're just going to use one oscillator again. We'll just make this a saw wave. Enter in a bass. Let's just go down. Turn off pencil mode. Let's just make this a long G like so. And put on some short notes here. So if we play the bass. feeling creative I'm gonna put a filter on that bring it down give it some envelope I'm actually gonna bring the uh, attack level or the peak level right down have the initial level up so that's gonna have our, our kind of uh, filter attack on it. then we can open it up so the longer note opens up Give it some spread. Okay, I'm getting carried away. Um, so what we can do is we normally what we do is we'd stick a compressor on and we'd go into the sidechain panel down here with this little arrow, turn on the sidechain, and we'd take the audio from that kick. So of course when we play the kick and bring bring the level down, the threshold down, it'll start sidechaining. Now that's all good, but it, as I said, this kick could have a lot of sub to it, and uh, that could be uh, draining out, um, dragging the, the, the compression out a bit. So what we can do is we can go into this kick channel, and we can actually duplicate this uh, chain here, and we'll call this, uh, we'll call this SC for side chain. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to turn off this oscillator, we don't need it. I'm going to keep this on a fixed sine wave. Uh, we'll bring the release time all the way down, turn off the pitch envelope. So basically if I solo this, so we've kind of got this the signal going now. It's just it's, we're not actually going to play this new thing. We're just going to use this as a as a, as information to set to, to the compressor. So that's very good. But what we can also do this is the fun part is we can use the MIDI effect, which is a note length, and we can drag this before the operator. So now we can actually determine how long that that uh, click sound is. Very very short or very 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 long, like so. 
So now what we can do is we can actually go over to this base channel and in the side chain compression we can take the audio from uh, the kick of course, this is what we've got selected, but we've got this drop down menu below it. We can now actually select the kick from the instrument rack with the SC chain, which is what we created. And I'm going to choose post effects because what we also need to do is go back to the kick channel and we need to put something after the operator to make sure it doesn't actually play any sound or else it's going to merge with that kick drum, which isn't going to sound too good. So I'm going to use, let's put a gate. So I'm just going to put a gate, whoops, going to put a gate after that operator like so and bring the th uh, threshold right up so that's now inaudible you can see that this this volume level, level isn't actually reaching the threshold so it's not going to play anything however that sidechain compressor is taking it uh, we'll say pre-FX so the sidechain the sidechain um, what's what's uh, affecting the sidechain is coming pre-FX on that SC chain which of course means that it's going to take the signal uh, from the actual chain before the effects are applied, aka the gate. So if we go back into here, you can see we've actually got our click track here. Now, why is this good? Well, if we go back, and I'm just going to unsolo this and unsolo this, desolo or whatever, we can now make sure we bring that down. We can now change the length of the note of that click to, to say how long we want that side chain to happen. So that's way too much. And if we go over here and we turn the release right down, you'll be able to hear that a lot more uh, prominent, prominently. And of course we can turn this on to sync mode as well if we want. We could change this to eighth notes. And we get that perfect uh, offbeat. Like so. And a bit more release of course. Bring the gain up if you want it to affect it more. So that's just a, a, a quick little tip. I mean, it can make all the difference. I mean, the, the reason is you could bring the length down. Let's say you don't want that pumping effect. So that's just going to be side chain now when the kick plays and it's not going to have that kind of pumping effect. A lot of good fun and what I always do is I always map this to a macro and I call this, uh, SC is what I call it, give it a nice colour. So there we go, so that's my instrument rack. So I load this up for my kick drum um, and I, I mean I don't have to use an operator here, I could load in a sampler and I could drag, drag, uh, drag in a kick drum here and uh, have that playing the kick. But this little thing is always, always there. It's always there, it's always playing exactly what you've got here. I mean, you can change these notes around and that click is always going to play at exactly the same place as the kick drum does. Like that. It sounds awful. And of course, I mean, you don't have to use it for a bass line. If I chuck in a, uh, where are we here? Let's chuck in one of these loops. So we could just copy this compressor over from this base channel by holding down the option key. Copy it over here as well. Bring the release right down. So it's just a matter of playing around with that value and uh, finding what you like. Uh, yeah, I hope you got something from that. Cool, thanks, TomCosm.com.